Have you ever faced a moment so dire that you felt like giving up? Today, I'm sharing my personal journey of surviving the impossible, a testimony to unshakable faith. Welcome to Coffee with Boren. Today's episode is about standing firm in faith during life's toughest trials. There are two dates that I will never forget as long as I live. Now, there are certainly more than two dates, of course, but there are two that I'm referencing that were really sort of a line in the sand where my life completely changed my view of God, my walk with God, and they were really a line in the sand. Those dates were March 2nd and April 9th in the year 2021. You see, March 2nd, I received a dream, and this dream was very lengthy, it was detailed, but I'm not going to go into it in great detail. The subject of the dream was that God was showing me that the enemy was going to be trying to kill me soon, and that he would succeed other than, if not for, the help that God was providing me when he would come. Now again, this was a lengthy dream. A detailed dream, some things were very clear, like the details I just told you, but there were also some parables in the dream that made sense later. Um, and there were also segments of the dream that served as kind of a sign that happened in real life shortly after to confirm that the dream was God and should be paid attention to. Now, of course, after this dream, I only told a couple of people um, couple friends of mine to pray and a couple of spiritual leaders in my life and my wife, of course. And the dream came true 40 days later, April 9th, when I found myself with my heart stopped and having a seizure and I'm knocking on death's door and I'm conscious of it. You see, this came as a total surprise to me, but it had happened one other time before. It was 10 years prior. I was sitting in a dentist chair shortly after I gave my life to Jesus, and the dentist accidentally put the Novocaine shot into my carotid artery, and the Novocaine went straight to my brain and then through my jugular to my heart. This triggered my heart to stop and for me to have a seizure. Not like a grand mal seizure or an epileptic seizure where you're unconscious because your heart always keeps going during those, as I've come to learn. And the other thing is that I've come to learn is most of those other kinds of seizures leave a person unconscious. For me, I was conscious. I was in great pain and suffering a lot of different things, including no control of my brain or body, but I'm conscious. It was a horrifying experience, definitely the toughest thing I've ever gone through. And I was finding myself in this scenario again now the fulfillment of the dream, the enemy had come and he was trying to kill me. He tried to kill me before as I, uh, as these parables came to show later when I worked this out with some leaders. He tried to kill me in 2011 and if he couldn't kill me then he was going to open a door to try to kill me again later. And now he was here again in April 9th, 2021 as a fulfillment of the dream that I received just 40 days prior. But I, in that time, had this one little piece of me that was conscious. I couldn't control my thoughts. My thoughts were haywire. But there was this conscious part of me, and I think of the scripture that Paul writes where he says, his spirit works with our spirit. And that's what I think was happening, was the Holy Spirit was working inside of me, and I had this prayer, Father, give me grace to overcome this because I know you've promised that I will not die in this situation. So I'm praying that I come out of it and that ends up being the hardest thing I've ever gone through, but it was only the catalyst to the hardest season that I would then face. For several months after, uh, my heart had been stopped, they think for somewhere around 30 to 60 seconds. And that was enough that my heart for months after was so weak that my veins, which you can see are pretty big, they were more like ditches in my arms. They had shrunk so much that there were literally indentions in my skin. 
and my heart uh, was struggling to beat. I couldn't go up a flight of stairs without being winded. I had to sleep on my left side every night because in any other position, my heart could not beat. It was too weak. There were constant triggers during this time. Any little wind that would hit my neck a certain way or certain thoughts would trigger this cascade of anxiety and fear, the fear of death coming upon me and I would have to battle this sensation as if I'm gonna go back to that place, having a seizure, my heart stopping and knocking on death's door again. This was a constant battle over these several months and I was incredibly overcome by fear, incredibly overcome by anxiety, but I did not submit to it because God had given me a promise in the dream that he had given me. There's a scripture that came to me during that time, and of course it was John 10.10. 10. It says the thief, or the enemy in some translations, comes to steal and kill and destroy. But my purpose, Jesus is saying this, my purpose is to give them a rich and satisfying life. Some translations say to give them life and life abundantly. I had the promise in the dream, but I also had this promise in John 10.10 10, that I was holding on to desperately during this time where anxiety was overcoming me and fear was overcoming me. And I, all I had when my body would fail, my heart would be struggling, my brain would be struggling. There's not someone you can grab onto and say, fix this for me. It's all in this secret place with God that I had to hold on to the promises that he had given me. Now, if you have faced similar challenges in your walk, maybe something like what I've gone through, or maybe something else where you knew you're at the end of your rope and the only thing you're hanging on to is the promise of God, please comment below and share with us, myself, my wife, but also those who are looking because not only is it empowering you to share the testimony of what you've gone through, but it also helps others know maybe I'm not alone in what I'm facing. So comment below what you have faced when you had only the little thread that it seemed, but it was just enough to know that God promised that you would make it through this trial. Now that's really what this whole thing revolves around. It's not the problem that we're facing. It's not the trial that we're under. It's faith. It's clinging on to his promises, even when there's nothing else to hold on to. And maybe especially when there's nothing else to hold on to. And that's what I found myself to be in the midst of. And that's the greatest battle I have ever faced in my Christian walk, period. It was the temptation to doubt what he had promised me. It was the temptation, stop having faith. But by his grace, I never once did. Though I felt overwhelmed and though I felt overcome and the greatest battle I'd ever faced was upon me, the battle that you're going to die. You can't breathe. Your heart's not working. Your brain is failing. There's no one that can help you. There's no one that can do anything. I still had the promise. And even when my, there were times where my vision like had disappeared. I'm in the middle of such a battle that I cannot see. I cannot breathe. My heart is failing. I'm on the edge of what seems like going back to that place. But in my heart of hearts, I'm standing in faith, telling God, you said you're going to save me, that I'm not going to die. And I am choosing to believe that. I don't have anything else telling me that that's true. Everything that I can analyze, everything that I'm feeling, everything that I can tangibly grab is telling me I'm going to die. But you said that I'm going to live and I choose to trust you. And the secret is that there's power in the promises of God. And it's not just the promises, but it's our partnership with them, faith. Think of when Peter, was standing in the boat seeing Jesus walking on the water past the boat he was in. And he says, tell me to come out to you. Well, there was a moment where Peter responded to the call of Jesus, come to me. 
and he's walking on water just like Jesus. He's actually doing it. He has the faith, and the faith in his word, come to me, was enough to, have, to give him the power to walk on water, doing the impossible. But then things shifted when he began to focus more on the wind and the waves. And Jesus says to him, why did you doubt? He fell into the water the moment doubt crept in and he agreed with it. Before that, he had all the power he needed because he was walking with, in faith of the promise of Jesus, the word come to me. And when he doubted, he began to sink. Now, the beauty of that story is not just that there's promise and that there's power in the promise and that we can walk in that promise by faith, but there's also beauty that sometimes when we fail, Jesus, sometimes we do fail. And when we do, Jesus is right there to grab us, lift us out of that detrimental moment and to also encourage and build our faith by teaching us to have faith in him. And that's really what I was going through was this moment of I'm walking on the water, but everything around me is telling me that I can't make it. But I found sustaining power. There was grace to never once agree with those thoughts of doubt that were tempting me. Somehow, by his grace, through months of this battle, I always chose to believe him. And there's a, a, a chapter in Psalms that you're probably very familiar with that I clung to so rigidly and firmly, and that's Psalm 91. And one of those verses, the first one actually says, uh, those who live in the shelter of the Most High will find rest in the shadow of the Almighty. And I chose that even though everything was telling me I can't make it, and not just that I can't make it, but this current suffering is so intense, I chose to believe I can find rest in his shadow. I can rest easy knowing I am going to be okay. And those are promises that give us power to overcome. And I've experienced it myself. Now, I've talked a lot about what I went through a couple of years ago. But as you can see, I'm not currently going through it now. I should let you know I'm in a health battle and it's been very difficult. There are things from that time that were revealed to us in the natural that uh, are causing a lot of problems and a lot of difficulty and a lot of challenge. But God promised not that I would just, you know, have this uh, life without trial. He promised me that the enemy was coming to try to kill me, but that I would live. And that is for sure true, as you can see with your own eyes and hear with your own ears. And I'm not just alive, but I'm thriving. I'm in a battle. Don't get me wrong. It's a hard battle, but I'm thriving. Again, I showed you my veins and my arms. My heart is strong. My brain is clear. I'm getting better every day. God has brought me into a place of healing and not just healing, but he delivered me from death. He delivered me from death, just like he promised he would. And now I'm on this other side of this battle where though there's health stuff, the battle of death knocking on my door several times a day and several times at night, that's over. And sometimes the enemy does try to come with little symptoms or little reminders to trigger like a PTSD thing. And I'm at a place where I've just seen God's faithfulness over and over again, that that stuff doesn't sway me. I'm not moved. I'm not shaken by these things. I'm on a foundation of unshakable faith in regards to the attack of the enemy against my life. And the beauty of that is it has nothing to do with me, my ability, my strength, my wisdom, nothing. It has everything to do with God with his promises, and just the simple fact that I chose to trust them. I chose to trust what he said above anything else. And that is why you're able to see and hear me today in such a lively form. 
It's because he did everything that needed to be done to fulfill his word in my life as I chose to trust him, to have faith in him, and not be moved, not be shaken by the circumstances. And even though that moment and that period of time in my life was the hardest time I have ever faced, hands down, nothing like it, it was also one of the best times of my life. I look back with such gratitude, I would never trade it for anything. Believe me, I don't wanna go through it. I didn't want to, and I wouldn't wish it on anybody, but I wouldn't trade it for anything. I'm so grateful because now that I'm on the other side, my faith, my view of God, my view of myself in God is so different and it's on such a more firm and stable foundation. I see him with so much more clarity. I hear him and I understand his voice better because not just what I went through, but the fact that I trusted him through it. He brought me to the other side and in the process, I've seen more of his love for me and I've grown in love for him. I've grown in trust in him. I've grown in unshakable faith. Now, if you are encouraged by this and you wanna hear more encouraging stories or other things from the Dulos Clan YouTube channel, please hit the subscribe button. There's more episodes of Coffee with Boren like we're doing right now. And there's also episodes of Sip and Sew with Ashley. We also release some music and there's other content. And we just would love to build this community full of believers. And even if you're not a believer, but you're encouraged, hit that subscribe button because I believe that God has something for you on this channel. So remember, I'm just sharing my testimony. I faced death. I was knocking on death's door or death was knocking on my door. But God had given me a promise not just to me personally, but there's promises in the scriptures that apply to my situation and they apply to yours as well. And I saw the light at the end of the tunnel, even when it didn't look like there was any light because I did not go by what I saw. I walked by faith instead. And that faith kept me unmoved and unshaken through the trial. And here I am on the other side, grateful for it and more alive in Christ than I've ever been. And remember, no matter how hard the trial is that you may be facing, have faith in God's promises. His promises are unshakable, which makes our faith in them unshakable as well. So be encouraged, stay blessed, and stand firm in faith. And I'll see you on the next episode of Coffee with Boren. Yeah.